When our friends Casey and Ryan asked us if we wanted to stay at an off-grid cabin in the middle of the winter, we didn't ask many questions. We usually don't when it comes to that kind of thing. We enthusiastically said yes and got our things ready, taking a Friday off and borrowing a jet sled from Nate's mom and dad to haul our stuff in for a long weekend. Making our way north through the snow on icy back roads during our trek there only added to the adventure. Radio check, 10-4. That's a big 10-4. We passed small towns on the way and rumbled past log yards, picking up chatter on the CB from log truck drivers wrapping up their week in the North Main woods. The snowshoe in was short, but our cargo was heavy. We huffed our way across a thick blanket of snow to the cabin, where it was a toasty 20 degrees inside. The wood stove was a welcome sight, even if it did take a while to warm the place up. Guillo Camp, established in 2020, but built long before that, would be our home for the next three days. After settling in, we wandered outside, sliding down the hill from camp to the frozen pond, drawing pictures in the snow, and collecting flakes in our eyelashes. I couldn't remember the last time I'd played in the snow. Hiked, yes. Skied, yes. But played. We made snow angels and hucked ourselves into snow piles, belly laughing about the fact that I almost brought 36 eggs with us for four people for three days. <laughs> the next morning we rose early and woke slowly we dallied and lazed by the fire before donning layer upon layer of gear for a snowshoe trek it wasn't quite zero degrees and dipped to negative 20 during the night so we made sure we were bundled before our journey down the frozen pond
Did it break? <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's gone. My dad's gonna kill me! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely broken. a friendly gray jay on the way who chattered and chirped at us. I pulled some rice cakes from my bag and we crumbled them up in our outstretched palms where he flitted and swooped, eventually landing to grab a bite. <laughs> He's right up above Ryan. Ryan's head. So where are we? Spring Pond. Spring Pond. Yeah, it's kind of a hidden gem. Not a lot of people know about it. I want to talk about fly fishing. Mm. Gotta hit just right though. Edit that out. Don't tell anybody about that. <laughs> Brook trout. Cool. Self-sustaining and not maintained by stocking. and a sun dog, a halo of light around the sun caused by refraction of ice crystals, greeted us. <laughs> Come on. Come. Come on. Come on. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. And it's yeah, like five degrees. Yeah. Warmed up a tiny bit. <laughs> and that looks like it's like looks like three degrees. Three. It's all three degrees. We arrived back at the cabin and stoked the fire until the space sat at a cozy 80 degrees. We had meant to play games and read, but instead we fell asleep for a short while, exhausted from the cold. 
We ate dinner late that night, opting instead to talk through the evening about life and relationships and generally getting to know one another even better than we already did. All right, so this is the first entry, September 4th, 2020. We got here at 11.30 p.m. and decided to have lunch. We get started at about 1 p.m., or we got started at about 1 p.m. and finished by 6.30 p.m. Two new roof panels, new stove piping up through the roof, new boot and cap. Uh, it went pretty well, but we worked hard to finish it today. Had dinner late. Kim had made us white chili, and it hit the spot. We are talking now, listening to the radio, and Ryan is enjoying some Knob Creek. The next day, we were able to not have to replace the roof panels for the heater vent side. That was real nice, as we only had to clean off the roofing, the roofing tape side, uh, the roofing tape residue, and install the new boot. We were finished by 1 p.m. With all of the time now on our hands, we decided to rebuild the outhouse. We finished that job at about 6.30 p.m. Holy, that's a lot of work for a couple days. We tore off the old roof that was hit by a tree and crashed right down the middle of it. Crushed right down the middle of it. Installed a new metal panel roof, replaced all of the mesh screening, and straightened the entire structure. Came out pretty nice and a great backup to the inside bathroom. We finished up a few other jobs and decided to spend some time on the pond. We pedaled down to Matt's camp at the other end of the pond. Ryan took the maiden voyage in Kim's kayak and christened it with Miller Lite. I trolled all the way down and back without a hit. We did fish off from the dock and Tom managed to catch one trout about seven inches long. Chub were all over the lure and we caught a few of those. Okay. Had a good trip and got some major work done. Almost ready for winter. Oh, here we go. Cloudy snow showers likely in the afternoon. Highs near 15 or minus 9C. Cloudy tomorrow night, a chance of flurries. Lows around 2 above or minus 17C. Hey, hey this is Evan. Can the pond is right there. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's way that, And that gate is our gate. Beetle Mount and Sea Shub. There it is. In the spring where we walked to today. Yeah. Where's your friend Casey? Is that where we are? This is where we are, yep. Mm. Right here. Chain the oh. oh, yeah. And that's, that's the gate. Our final morning in the cabin felt brief. The world started to close back in as we got ourselves ready and repacked our sleds.
how do you feel about this trip, Casey? Well, <laughs> bit of sweet. <laughs> bit, bit of sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> like everything went super smooth. Yeah. Was... Doesn't that feel good? Like give that little like foot like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Feel good? I like it. We decided to take the Golden Road back home, stopping at a new brewery for pizza, beer, and cell phone service. Eventually, parting ways for home. Reluctantly. Hey, <laughs> Absolutely loving it. Do you guys want to do cross country skiing right now? <laughs> I mean, I probably would. There's a trail right over there. Thank you. Thanks for having us at your camp.